Welcome to this video tutorial where we will be going through setting up and implementing the Facebook SDK for React Native. We'll be focusing specifically on setting up the native SDK for iOS in Xcode and then linking it together with React Native. If you guys like this video and would like a tutorial specifically for setting up the SDK in the Android environment, you can comment below and we can definitely figure that out. All the website uh, I'm using in this tutorial will be linked in the description so they're easy for you guys to access. We'll start by setting up a new React Native project, download and set up the React Native Facebook SDK in Xcode, and then set up a Facebook application that we can then link to our React Native application. At the time of this tutorial, the newest stable version of React Native is 0.40 and iOS is 10.2. The steps taken in this tutorial might differ depending on what version of React Native or iOS you are running. So without further ado, let's get started. Go ahead and navigate to the folder where you want to store your React Native project. I keep all of my development projects in a folder depending on what platform I'm developing for. I'm using the React Native command line interface to initiate a new project and we're doing that by typing react-native in it and then you type the name of the project. All the dependency needed will now install and in the meantime we can get on with setting up a Facebook application to link to our project. Go ahead and navigate to developers.facebook.com and click the my apps in the top right and create new app. You want to type the name of your application and set a contact email in case Facebook needs to get in contact with you. You also need to choose a category that best describes what your application is about. And then you want to pass the security check. Once you pass the security check, it's time to set up the Facebook application to allow for authentication. What you're seeing now is the product setup, where you can click the Get Started on the right, where it says Facebook Login. If you don't see this window, you can click Add Product from the left-hand pane. As we're using iOS for this tutorial, go ahead and choose the Platform iOS and hit Download iOS SDK. Go ahead and click Continue and wait for the SDK to download. I already have a version of the SDK installed, so I'll just be using this and continue on with the next step. Do however notice that I have saved the folder with the SDK in my documents, and the reason for this is that we will be needing to supply a search path for Xcode later on, so go ahead and save your version of the SDK somewhere where you're not going to delete it by mistake. By this time, the React Native project should be installed successfully, so go ahead and navigate to your terminal and CD into your project folder. Now CD into the iOS folder and open the Xcode project. When your Xcode project has started up, it's time to import the frameworks from the Facebook SDK. Navigate to your terminal and install the React Native dependencies for the Facebook SDK by typing react-native install react-native-fbsdk. Hit enter and after that you want to link the frameworks. So go ahead and type react-native link react-native-fbsdk. Now go ahead and start the npm server by typing npm start and hitting enter. So we are ready to run the project. Navigate to where you saved your version of the Facebook SDK and select bolts fbsdk core kit, fbsdk login kit, fbsdk share kit, and then drag them to the project pane in Xcode. Make sure you select the application as the target and tick the copy items if needed. You can now select the frameworks in Xcode, right click and choose new group from selection and rename the folder to frameworks. Click the Xcode project file at the top level and navigate to build faces, link binary with libraries and make sure that the important frameworks has been linked. Now go to build settings and do a search for framework search paths. 
Double click the path on the right hand side, click the plus sign in the bottom left corner and drag the folder for the Facebook SDK into the text input. Now go back to the general tab and make sure you have selected a development team for the application. As you can see, for me this gives some errors as we didn't supply a unique bundle identifier. So if yours is unique, you're good to go. Otherwise you'll have to change that. I'm simply adding some numbers to make mine unique for now. Now that we have a unique identifier, it's time to go to the next step in the setup. Go ahead and copy the bundle identifier and get back to developers.facebook.com. Click continue and supply the bundle identifier in the text input. Click save, then continue. Enable single sign on and click continue. Click the copy code of the first code snippet. Navigate back to Xcode. Expand the folder with the name of your project and locate info.plist. Right click the file and choose open as source code and paste in the code at the bottom of the file before the closing dict tag. Copy the next piece of code and paste that in after the other, again before the closing dict tag. You now want to navigate to your at delegate.m file and go back to the guide. Copy from the snippet and place it in the code as following. You can see that we get these error messages in our app delegate file and that's because we need to do a npm install in our react native project folder. Open your terminal and navigate to your project folder and type npm install or npm i for short. Continuing on with inserting the code snippets, copy what's inside the did finish launching with options function and paste it into the same function in your app delegate file. Copy the source application function and paste it after the did finish launching with options function and before the at end. Continue on the next step. It's talking about adding a login button in iOS, so now it's time to switch over to React Native and write a little code. You can go ahead and run your project to open up the simulator and make sure your project compiles first. If you go to the GitHub page for the React Native SDK, you can find the functions that we'll be using to log in the users. Scroll down to Usage and locate the code using the Login Manager. If you go back to Xcode, we can see that the build succeeds, so we can now use the iOS simulator to test our project. Go ahead and open your project in your code editor of choice. I'm using Atom with Nuclide for my React Native development. When you see the simulator read, Welcome to React Native, you're ready to start coding. So in our React Native project structure, the gateway to your iOS application is the index.ios.js file. So any changes in this file will be compiled to the native iOS code. So start by importing the Facebook SDK into your project by typing import FB SDK comma and then login manager from react native SDK. Remove all the code inside the top level view component and make a button. The button will just be a touchable opacity with a text component inside saying login with Facebook. Now remember to also import the touchable opacity component from React Native. Now make a function that holds the code for logging in. I'm calling mine fb auth and I prepend an underscore at the start of my functions to signify that it's a private method. This is not necessary but I think it improves readability of the code so it's a thing I've gotten used to doing. Now call the login with read permissions on the login manager and supply an array of Facebook permissions that you want to access as the argument for the function. 
In this example, we'll just be accessing the public profile of the user. You can see a full list of what permissions are available at developers.facebook.com slash docs slash Facebook login slash permissions. The link for this will also be in the description. The function returns a JavaScript promise that we need to handle. After the function call, we type dot then and supply a new function as the argument. This new function is called if the promise was fulfilled. We can make a check inside this function to see if the login was cancelled prematurely by calling is cancelled on the result. And let's just lock that to the console for now. Put an else statement to execute the code that you want to run if the login is a success. You can call permission granted to return the permissions that the user granted you access to by calling permission granted on the result. You now want to handle what happens if the promise is rejected. Make a comma after the ending bracket of the succeeding function and make a new function that represents the rejected promise. For now we'll just print out the error to the console, but obviously you want to handle this in some way in your final application. It's now time to assign the function you just made to the button. You do this by typing onPress in your opening tag of the touchable opacity component and supplying the function in there. Save your code and refresh your simulator by pressing command R. You can see I have an error. You might have noticed that I misspelled function at the start. So changing that and reloading you can see that we have our login with Facebook button. Go ahead and click it and you can see the page pop up where you can sign in. If you hit command D and click the debug.js remotely, it will open a Chrome browser window where you can see all the console locks. This might throw an error, but you can just reload the application once the Chrome window has opened and that will fix it. So open the Chrome developer tools by clicking command alt J. Now if you click the login button, you can see that it says the name of the Facebook application that you're trying to connect to. Try to cancel the login and you will see that it printed the message rewriting the function. I'm going to go ahead and try to log in for you guys so you can see what will happen. So you can now see what information the application is trying to access. You can click continue and you'll see the console print with the permissions that you granted access to. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do leave a comment or a like and consider subscribing for future videos. If you have any suggestions for things you'd like me to cover in these video tutorials, do also leave a comment and I'm sure we can figure it out.